What's up, y'all? It's me, Erica. This is your Love and Hip Hop episode 15, 13. I don't know what episode it is. I wrote it down somewhere. Anyways, if you haven't already, in the first 10 seconds, liked and subscribed and commented, just let me know that you stopped by. Say, hey, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Or, hey, Erica. Hey, girl. Like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. Um, this is your love and hip hop review. All right, so let's discuss. I feel like I can't see today. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. This episode overall was okay. It was good. It was cool. A lot of a lot of nigga shit. A lot of nigga shit. I'm gonna try and remain calm throughout this whole thing. Lady, what are you doing already, y'all? I can't even be out in the in the field for too long. She had to put her glasses on. My cataracts. Oh, that reminds me. I have an edible. A1 and Marcus start off. They start talking about Rockstar. And they meet and start talking about Rockstar and Ray J. He's telling Marcus, A1 is telling Marcus that he basically is not with the bullshit. He's not. He's focused on the baby. He's focused on the positive. He's not focused on any a1, um, not he's not focused on rock star or anybody like that. He invites Marcus to the gender reveal that they're about to have, and he says that Brooke can't come because she's been too messy. And I agree. You know, the whole thing with um, A1 and Lyrica with this thing, I think it's important for them not to have anyone around them who is feeding into that rumor or encouraging the rumor or starting the rumor. You understand what I'm saying? So now I'm gonna have to put my glasses on. This is crazy. I need sunglasses, prescription sunglasses. This doesn't work. And I'm too sh sh short, whatever. I really should have read these notes. I just watched the episode this morning. He just told him that he can't go to the gender reveal. And that's understandable. I wouldn't invite Brooke to my gender reveal either. And then his mom shows up, A1's mother, Pam. She shows up looking crazy. Okay, the sun is about to, I always do this. I always do this and then the sun, when I hit this, curve on the um on the highway the sun be right in my face again look dip, I look, look different okay anyways let me focus I haven't had no coffee or nothing see look I can't wait until the sun is overcasted by the clouds you don't have no bleaker on you merging into traffic off of being on the shoulder you against the law I'm gonna start putting my damn sirens on for these motherfuckers Yes, you vaping in the morning. Let me tell you something about California. Every time you look over, somebody got the damn vape. There's be clouds of smoke in their car. It's legalized. Legalize it. Ha <laughs> ha. I need to relax. Look at this Mercedes. Look how fast he's coming. Whoop. Look. I'm giving you a traffic report. Because I really can't talk. That's why he had to stop. I really can't talk right here. So I just can't. Con I need to concentrate because the sun is in my face. So y'all just got to ride for a second. Shit. So wait till I talk about Pam and this wig that she had on at that baby at that gender reveal, child. That just, that okay. So I wouldn't have invited her. She was upset because she wasn't invited to the ultrasound. But listen, this is the thing. This is why you have to sometimes stop and then like spell it out in a way that an eight-year-old would understand it. Sometimes you just gotta break it all the way the fuck down. Pam should have been told by a one. You were not invited to the ultrasound because one you have no respect for my wife and her mother two her and her mother are in a good space three you think this baby is not mine so you can't come to nothing in regards to that because we don't want Lyrica under stress you and her mother together bring her stress she needs to deliver like princess told her a happy baby child whatever the hell it is we know it's a boy now we figure out it's a boy but you need to you need to be around people who are positive encouraging and uplifting not people backbiting brooke not people talking not rock star not ray j none of those people not even your mothers like if y'all can't behave this is something that's for me if y'all want to make this about yourselves y'all can't come y'all can go somewhere else and make it about yourselves you can't come because we want it to be a positive event we didn't see the whole event they only showed the gender reveal and that was it you know i guess that's cool because 
you know, that's some personal things. They're going to share that portion with us. But the rest of the party, I guess it was okay not to share whatever. We see that they're having a boy. Congratulations to A1 and Lyrica. We know that A1 is the father. They had some kind of test, in vitro type of test. Not in vitro, but in utero type of test. He's the father. Whole thing about her storyline on who's the father. I, th I just think it's kind of just like a fucked up situation. I Ray J and Brooke have... I I feel like a lot of people have been asking, has has Brooke been paid to behave in this manner? And for the sake of character, I hope, I hope that she's fucking around. Because everybody seems to have a problem with Brooke. His mother is yelling at him, I raised you. What does that mean? Bitch, you don't own me? Like, you parents are out of fucking control. I'm your mother. Okay, but he has a wife now, and you have issues with his wife's mother, so you can't come around if every time you come around you gonna have an issue with his wife's mother or my wife. You just can't come around until you figure out how to be act your age and act like you got some fucking sense you can't come around lady it's just the bottom line you are another adult then you don't get just because you hold some title that you feel in the hierarchy you're higher than does not mean you are allowed to be disrespectful to me my family my wife and her mother you have to set some boundaries with these black ass parents i'm trying to tell y'all i'm your mother bitch what the fuck is that supposed to mean I'm supposed to let you come in my home and disrespect my kids and my soon to my wife and my baby to be. Am, am I supposed to do that? Lady, are you fucking crazy? You don't get no hierarchy to disrespect people. Fucking out. Get out the fuck out of here with that bullshit. What fuck is wrong with you black ass parents? There's a baby involved here. Uh, A1 says y'all playing around we ain't got time for that we trying to we trying to bring a baby into a positive loving situation and with y'all on this shit we can't do that and that's just it that, and that's what you have to that's how you have to talk to these motherfuckers because they act like they don't have to abide by any rules because they have some authority over you it's fucking crazy. Nikki, Monice, and LaBrittany are getting massaged. They start talking about London. Nikki's saying that she has an issue with Brooke saying something about Solo Lucci. Then they start talking about K. Michelle and Akbar, and all of a sudden, Tierra Marie walks up. What, what was you saying? She's so aggressive. And I, I, to, to a bitch, well, I was going to say, a bitch with a self-esteem that low, you real wild aggressive, but... I, you know, it comes with the territory. Strong and wrong, it comes with the territory. You just so wrong, Tierra, and everything. I, I said this morning when I review this, am I gonna skip over Tierra's bullshit because her storyline is bullshit? I don't even want to talk about Tierra Marie. I just don't want to talk about it. I know that all these storylines are contrived, but like Lyrica and A1, that's not the bitch is pregnant. You can clearly see, right? Rockstar clearly is trying to be like Stevie J and be this grimy ass, scoundrel ass, vile ass waste of flesh. You can see that it's an act. Hopefully it's an act. Hopefully he doesn't act like that because I would imagine that would be bad for business that everybody that comes into the studio with you, you talk shit about them when they leave and act like you're pumping them up in the studio but then talk shit about them when they leave like you a raggedy ass nigga but anyway tiara shows up and she was like um she was like i don't have what's her name monice was like i don't have any animosity monice tr is trying to explain to tiara marie that you know we have these receipts from akbar brooke has them she was like well what the fuck does brooke have anything for it's none of brooke's business again it's none of brooke's business monice is just really trying to explain to the girl like i'm not gonna get involved to the extent that you want people to support you when you keep going to meet this guy. Nikki sits up in her chair. She's like, wait a minute, TT, you didn't tell me you went to Dallas. Well, bitch, I did. And if I did, that's my fucking business. Okay. And you can allow it to be your business, sweetheart. But nobody's going to get involved in this bullshit with you. We are not doing this with you, TT. Nobody, nobody reviewing this. No, none of your friends, none of your fake friends. Nobody is dealing with this bullshit with this nigga, this scamming ass, hustling ass nigga with you, TT. We're not doing it. You need to get your self-esteem up, get your ass in some fucking therapy. As a matter of fact, you need to ask fucking Monique who the fuck is her therapist and psychiatrist so that you can get the prescribed whatever the fuck she's on. Because your attitude, your self-esteem, everything is fucked up and you too old for that. You want somebody to be okay with you making poor excuses. Let me make the mistakes. Bitch, you're not 
21. You're not. And yes, everybody does make ultra mistakes in relationships. Everybody has done it. Everybody has done something stupid for a nigga. Every nigga has done something stupid for a woman. Everybody. 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 But you don't get to, you don't, you're not allowed to continue to make the same mistakes every fucking season, TT. You cannot do it. It's whack. And you look fucking crazy, bitch. You have so much shit to offer your, for everything you can sing. You look, you're pretty, and you wasting your time and your worth based on some man. I just, every season, it's not just Akbar, it's Cisco, it's Ray J, it's everybody. And all these niggas have disrespected you on every single season. If you're doing this for a check, you look fucking crazy. That's not that should not be the legacy that you want to leave. Period. Done talking about Tierra fucking Maria and that motherfucking nigga. I'm done. It's just stupid. You want it closure? You have a legal action against this man. Do you realize how stupid you are for wanting closure? Bitch, you could have got closure over FaceTime. So nobody's going to re re support you if you keep going back. And they're, they may support you after he does something like really, like incredibly where you just can't come back. And now we're going to be here as your friends. But I wouldn't be your friend. I, I mean, I wouldn't support you in this way. Not with this man. No. She says she's going to talk to Brooke. She grabs her shit and she leaves. Tierra comes into a scene every single time. Very aggressive. Very confrontational. You're the wrong one. Bitch, you're wrong. And you want everybody to believe that you're the victim in this. And you're not. Yes, he shouldn't have released that porn. If you didn't have anything to do with it, fine. But at the end of the day, bitch, you keep running back. Ain't nobody gonna have your back. Solo Lucci and Rockstar are in the studio doing absolutely nothing. Probably will never release it. Release anything, any music. I haven't heard anything. I don't even know who Solo Lucci is. The first time I heard of him was on Love and Hip Hop, and then I saw him in uh, 444 video, Jay Z's 444 video, talking about how he almost died and this and that. I don't know who he is. He seems like he wants to be a good person. But then this bro code that men have that is really um, code, it's really a code for being deceptive to women and treating women in a foul way and enjoying the ramifications that come with that. Rockstar is upset and feels like Marcus went back to Brooke and told her and Solo went back Solo went back not Solo Marcus went back to Brooke and told her about um about Solo and Nikki and that's the reason why Brooke asked the question now I believe that Marcus and Brooke do a lot of pillow talk and I believe that Brooke takes the information that from the men and she uses it for leverage like she just uses it to her advantage um, and act like she got something on over on somebody. Nikki and LaBrittany walk in. And I, I just don't understand why they they say that they're gossiping. That, that Marcus is gossiping. Here's the, the deal, Rockstar. You sat up there and for several episodes have s talked about your dick with another man's wife. As though... It's something to be proud of and also as though it's something to hold in confidence you want somebody to hold in confidence that you're sleeping with another man's wife and the man's wife his friends are sitting around you you new to this group my nigga these niggas don't know you so Marcus is well within his right nigga you telling everybody you didn't say to nobody don't say nothing you want this bro code of deception. We, I'm not doing that. Don't get down like that. You walking around in this in this town telling people that you slept with my, my homeboy's wife, my nigga. Not his girlfriend. Not somebody he's fucking with. Not his side bitch. His wife. And you bragging on it and gloating and being real, real haughty about it. Like it's something to be proud of.
If anything, my nigga, if you fucking with somebody's wife or somebody's spouse, that's not something that you would tell any fucking body. That's why I feel like you lying, but then at the same time, I, I don't know. I could, Do I believe Rockstar and Lyrica may have had some sexual relations? Possibly. Possibly. I mean, I mean, anything's possible. But I think if you're doing something like that, I think that you would keep it to yourself. The way that Nikki is keeping to herself that her and Solo Lucy has some sexual relations. Because he said he felt like he had to disrespect her. You don't have to disrespect anybody. You could have respected her in that situation. But no, what you're doing is performing for this man that's sitting right here. That's what a lot of you motherfuckers do. And you, you fuck up a lot of shit because you start performing for your audience instead of actually dealing with the person that you have a problem or conflict with. Nikki dumps out a whole bunch of money telling Solo Lucci that he owes the strip club some money and you're fake and you doing all this and he gets mad. But nigga, it is fake because you said at the beginning that you're spending your advance money. So it's not really your money unless you produce some music, my nigga. You're not going to get, you're going to have to pay that money back. <laughs> you're paying that money back. So you really don't have any money. So to be to 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 back up Nikki, you probably do owe the strip club. You probably do. She dumped out a whole bunch of money. I don't know why Nikki thinks that the answer to everything is money, but it depends on how you were raised. And she was raised in a family whose focus was making money. They own some strip clubs. Ain't mad at that. Get your money if you want. You know, I mean, but I don't. I didn't understand the throwing the money out or dumping money a bunch of ones on the floor i just i didn't get it but if that was for effect and drama and entertainment whatever girl i don't know do y'all believe that they didn't sleep together or the way that he made it seem i didn't hear what he said but it made it seem like he he they maybe had she sucked his dick i i, I don't under, i don't know or he ate her out I, I don't know i have no idea he's the man when men are talking uh, marcus is basically a snitch and this is the thing like snitches are correlated with telling on somebody who was doing something they weren't supposed to be doing. Instead of Marcus being encouraged to do the right thing by telling A1 that Rockstar is going around saying that he fucked Lyrica, you take that as he's gossiping. Not being a good friend, but as he's gossiping. And never mind you're gossiping and talking to a bunch of strangers about this man's wife. So you a gossiping ass bitch. So what's the difference? Lyrica and Princess sit down. Lyrica invites Princess to the gender reveal. Tells her that Ray J is not invited and he shouldn't be invited. You don't wish me. You want to you wanna encourage the rumor just like Brooke. So y'all motherfuckers are not invited. I love that they did that. Y'all not invited. I don't want any drama. Princess said that she was in, out, she was in labor for 27 hours with no epidural. princess are you sure because I, I, I swear you said you couldn't feel your legs now I for both of the children that I uh, was granted to bring into this world uh, to this world through my vessel um, I didn't have an epidural for either one of them and their labors did not last that long. I imagine if they did, I would have wanted something to relieve the pain because that shit is not, it's not, um, it's not a massage. <laughs> that shit is painful. I mean, we know women who have had children. It's a, I mean, and not an epidural. I don't see how you can be in labor for 27 hours. And I swear to God, I remember you saying, now ladies, when you get an epidural, do, do, are your, can you feel your legs? Okay. So I don't know what Princess was talking about. It sounds good to say that you had your child natural, but doesn't it doesn't match with the, the footage that I saw saying that your legs was frozen or, or asleep or, or numb and that you was in labor for 27 hours and then had to do a C-section. I don't know. I have no idea. She doesn't want, and Princess tell, gives her inform, gives her good advice and says you don't want you don't want any drama around you while you're pregnant. And I t that's really really great advice. You are bringing another a human into this world, and you want that pregnancy. I could I'll tell you I t both both of my pregnancies were very stressful. I was stressed out more so with the second 
child and I had him 29 weeks early he was three pounds and it was I had a lot of stress at that time and it's very crucial for you to not have stress because you do give your baby that stress and I can tell you based on that I can see my son my second son I could see that he's always stressed like always like mm, he's just always stressed out and I attribute that to me being completely stressed out completely angry completely frustrated completely just in a bad place when I was pregnant with him in a horrible place when I was pregnant with him and he came 29 weeks early and he almost died the doctor I mean doctor said if I would have had I mean they had to give me steroids to basically um, develop his lungs because he was at the stage where his lungs were developing I was 29 weeks so you know you have a baby at 40 weeks he was two and a half months early he was born in January he was supposed to be born in April I'm glad I had an Aquarius and not an Aries oh shit no offense but but anyways <laughs> The stars know, bitch. They know. God damn it. <laughs> the universe knows. Oh, my God. A fire sign? No, ma'am. Oh, shit. No, ma'am. So they had, so she said, you're not invited. And she said, Brooke is not invited either because of her rumors. Lyrica said that Brooke be sleeping around. And Princess was like, I thought she was celibate. She was like, we, we all thought that. <laughs> Lyrica for dropping some tea real quick and just keeping it moving like bitch you want to play with me <laughs> you want to play because I know some tea on you bitch if you want to you want to encourage rumors about me not uh, this not being a1's baby we, we, we could play a game okay Tierra and Brooke me I just didn't like Tierra I didn't like Brooke's demeanor I didn't like Tierra's demeanor Brooke was being like she was all cool about the situation. She tries to be like calm and collected. And for a person like Tierra, when somebody's like that, she wants to com be com confrontational. She's a mad. She wants to, everybody to be wrong about whatever it is she's going through. And she wants support, but then she's angry at the people that she wants to support her because nobody believes her because she keeps going back and doing the same fuck shit. And nobody's fucking with you. So she starts off talking shit. And then... Brooke is like real calm and like, girl, what what are you doing? You you go into the nigga's house, you going to visit him. And Tara keeps saying, Well, that's my business. That's my business. She said, Well, you told me something else. So if you told me something else and I'm riding for you and you doing something else, nigga, we can't do that. And I'm with Brooke. Like, you can't do that, Tiara. You just can't do it. You can't sit up here and lie to us and tell us tell us you doing something. Have us standing up with you at a fucking press conference, my nigga. And then you fly the before we go to London, you fly to the nigga's house. Uh, and he said we had and, and he said y'all had sex. And if we did, that's none of your business, bitch. That's why nobody can't support you, Tierra Marie. We got receipts. She was looking crazy. She was like, somebody is going around following y'all, following y'all and taking video of y'all. Tierra looked like she was surprised at that. I'm interested in seeing how he flips that to her. We see her later on in the episode. She ends up texting him, I miss you, I want to talk, and then has this smile on her face. Her little Ray J talking ass, she sounds just like Ray J when she talks. Listen to both of them talk. They have the same inflection. She was around him for a long time. She talks just like Ray J. She sounds like she's from L.A. She's from Detroit. But her inflections and everything, she's been in L.A. for a long time. She sounds like fucking Ray J talking. And she wanted to get closure. And she was like, I'm the victim. No, well, I mean, you're the victim. I mean, ah, ah. see, this is the problem. This is the problem. I want to support you being victimized of revenge porn. But then my support can't be aligned with you continuing to be allowing yourself in a position to be abused. You're supposed to separate yourself. And yes, I understand when something is over, you going back and saying, you know, can we work it out or something, trying to get closure. But at, oftentimes closure is not a good thing to do because, I mean, really... It can mess up your case, Tierra. Like, what are you doing? You, I, you, you're the victim, but 
you're allowing yourself to be victimized and that's what's crazy ad and fizz go and have drinks fizz is so cute with his shabadoo looking ass oh my god he's so cute fizz is really cute like oh shit he has, he has drinks with monice's girlfriend ad and they were like oh we're level-headed and uh, Monice doesn't have her priorities together. She wants a ring, but we still have a, you know, volatile relationship. It's still, we're still fighting a lot and arguing a lot. Fizz says he no longer is with AD's best friend, Tiffany, who is, seemed like a weird bitch anyway. Like, why are you mad? I mean, like, it, this thing that doesn't, it, it's for the viewer. If I don't have a backstory and you come on the screen pissed off at somebody and I don't understand you look crazy I don't know what what you mad about can you explain why you have all this animosity towards um Moniece is it because she's with AD and you really wanted to be with AD are you a lesbian because you was saying that she was a fake lesbian or whatever maybe she's bisexual maybe she's not a lesbian <laughs> maybe she's bisexual fuck out of here and she and and Moniece and Fizz she was like we need to draw boundaries you know, he's like, I broke up with her because, you know, I'm trying to be a successful co-parent and she's, it's just too much drama and, I, and that's more important. And kudos to Fizz for being able to identify what's more important, pussy or your child or your relationship with your child's mother. That's important and just as much as the child too. But I just want to be in a good space with her. Let me get over here too much apple watts goes to jail i'm uh, i can't i'm this is really draining me on some real shit apple watch goes to jail she's gonna be in there for 30 days um, when she gets out sean love has already got her apartment which i think is wonderful says stay positive in there if you have to do the 30 days we're gonna try and get you out i got people on it but when you come out you're gonna have some new shit so try to do the 30 days i'm i got you through thick and thin i am if it, you know what I would like? I would like to watch. I want to see Apple. I, I I wouldn't. I don't necessarily think she needs a sitcom. Not a sitcom. A reality show. But I definitely want a more focused story on her. I'm really interested on, in that story. I feel like it's the most authentic story on here besides A1 and Lyrica's pregnancy. I feel like it's the most authentic story. And um, Monice's mental illness. That's the only thing I feel that's really authentic. They have the gender reveal. Pam's wig looks a fucking mess. And they do the, the spray gun. A1 is ecstatic and happy. They're having a baby boy. Cute gender reveal how they did it. Um, but I think gender reveals suck. Whatever. I think they're stupid. Because it's like, I don't know. It just feeds into the, I don't know. Whatever. Let me shut up my own opinion about shit. Fizz and Monice meet. And she was like, she had anxiety in London about the kid. And he was like, he's grown. I mean, he's older. You need to talk to him about answering his phone and stuff like that. And that's true. That's true. Fizz could put something in his ear and say, you know, when your mother calls you, you need to pick the phone up. But if he's old enough to have a conversation, she needs to, you know, I mean, it's good to have somebody supporting your rules. You understand what I'm saying? That's part of co-parenting is not doing the what I really hate to see in co-parenting is the good cop, bad cop shit. I hate that shit. You support each other. You know, um, I think that is the most important. And I see that him and Monice are really trying to work on it. He explains to her that he broke up with the girl because it wasn't conducive to their relationship. And, and he was like, you know, I don't get involved in your shit. She said, because nobody, and I loved it when she said this, nobody that i'm with is allowed to disrespect you see when the man doesn't disrespect when the when one parent doesn't respect the other parent it gives the other parent's partner a pass to disrespect the other parent because the other parent they've been fe feeding their partner whatever bullshit whatever one-sided story about the relationship so they're taking on the anger of that person forgetting the fact that relationships dissolve and everything has a two-sided story and you can't but I, I mean it's typical and it's understandable why people do that like you you take on the anger but when you when you're when you disrespect your your child's uh 
parent, their partners think it's okay, period. And that's what she said. I've never allowed anybody to disrespect you. That's why you don't have no problems out of whoever, whoever I'm with. They're not allowed to disrespect you. Fizz apologize. She said, I have this label on me that I'm this bad mother. I'm this awful person. And you put this label on me, making it seem like I'm this bad mother. And I'm this, I'm a dope ass mom. And he apologized for saying that to her, which I thought was cool. And, you know, she deserves an apology. That girl's been through a lot, and she is taking active steps that we can see to change. This the son is out of control. Um, Rockstar Marcus and Solo Lucci meet. Marcus is, they're mad at Marcus for telling Brooke what Solo and Rockstar said. And they're talking about Drew gossiping. And I had to disrespect Nikki. You didn't have to disrespect Nikki. You could have been admirable and been a man and been like you know an upstanding man a different man an exceptional man and called people out on their bullshit you know and been okay with that you gossiping you telling everybody the business and you told you said in a room full of everybody so it's you made it public so I shared it and I'm sharing it with the nigga that you talking about so what's the problem you mad cuz I told him you was talking about his fucking wife you shouldn't have been talking about his wife and if you was any kind of real ass nigga you wouldn't be telling nobody that you fucking somebody's wife my nigga you a fucking pig you a fucking you a pig for fucking somebody's wife but you a pig for telling everybody and bragging and then, and then, uh, and then, the power of suggesting, suggesting that Lyrica, you, that you fucked her raw, that you, that you could possibly be her child, child's father, like you, you're raggedy, you're raggedy, and they deserve to be uh, a one deserve to have that information. And Marcus told him just right, nigga, you told your business, you told your business. I didn't tell your business, you told it. You told me, you told Solo Lucci, you told Ray J, you told your business. I didn't tell your business. So don't get mad at me. And you sitting up in that chair acting like people are gossiping. You are the messiest nigga up here. You and Brooke. And next week we see that Marcus tells Brooke not to fuck with Rockstar. And let me tell you something. Rockstar and Brooke might start fucking around with each other because they mirror each other. They mirror each other. They have the same, they move the same way. So when you see somebody that's mirroring you and, and, and you think that the qualities that, that, that's being mirrored and reflected back to you are good qualities, you're going to think that that person is like you and you're going to start befriending that person and, 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 and start sharing with that person. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Brooke and Rockstar start fucking around because y'all just alike. Tierra Marie is sitting there texting. She's talking about Akbar influenced her. Yeah, bitch, he influenced you. He was trying to influence you and he was fucking grooming you for some bullshit. I'm over Tierra. I probably will not talk about Tierra anymore, her storyline, unless it gets absolutely interesting to the point where I can't do nothing but talk about it because it's stupid, it's fake, and I, I can't deal with it. You stupid, I can't, I can't. I'm with our friends. I can't support you. I don't even want to talk about your storyline, bitch. I don't want to. I don't even want to talk about your storyline. All right, I'm out of here. I tried to stay calm. I don't even know what the fuck. Have a wonderful day. Um, you guys take care of each other. I'm going to come back tomorrow with the with the um. Oh, what's this on my thing? Oh, something. I'm gonna come back with the um Orange County review. Okay. Ooh. That air felt good on my head. All right, y'all. Y'all have a wonderful day, and um, we'll see. We'll see you later. All right, peace.